All right, guys, so before I actually display my list of users right here, what I want to do is reiterate exactly how we got here and how we are taking this list and using it in our component because this is actually the hardest part of Redux. So if you guys understand this, then you essentially figured out Redux. So it really isn't that hard. So what we did is we made a reducer and a reducer is just a little piece of data that we want to save in our application. Now, every reducer that we create, every little piece of data, we need to combine it into one big object. And we just name that object all reducers. So then we take all of those different pieces and we make a big master object called our store. So again, all the store is, is a bunch of data. Any data that you want to store in your application, we're just going to save it in an object called store. That's it. And right here, what this provider did is it took all of that data. And since we wrapped app with it right here, pretty much every single component has access to this data right now. So that's it. Now you may be asking, all right, so why don't you just pass it all in? Why do you need this right here? Well, the reason we have to map state to props is because we usually don't want to pass in every single bit of data. I mean, right now we only have this list of users, but later on we're going to have movies, music, forum posts, blogs, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So instead of just taking all your data and passing it into every component, what we're going to say is actually just take the users and pass it into the users list. That's really all it cares about. It doesn't care about your movies at all. So that's all it does. Connect your main state or part of your store and pass it in to a component as its properties. Easy peasy. So now what we can do is instead of these list items, we can actually display these users. And let me get rid of this, clean it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'll say um, this create list items looking good so again all this function is going to do is instead of trying to write all our functionality right here it's just going to go through get each item in the list which is a user and turn it into a list item and i'm not going to print out everything i'll just print out like their first name and last name something that the user can click on so we need to return some html so anytime we want to loop through part of our state, again, remember, we can access this as a property called users. So this dot props dot users is equal to this list right here. So again, since we want to loop through it, uh, we just have to call a function called map. So map is going to loop through the array and for each object in there or each user, or just say, actually, let me go ahead and do this. Actually, I'll use a shorthand version. So for each object, treat them as user. And for each user, what do I want to do? Well, I just want to go ahead and return a list item. So a list item, and I'll say user.first. I didn't name it first, not first name, right? Yep, user at first, user dot last. So it's going to make a list item with their first name and last name. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this from the last tutorial or the last video series, but anytime you make a list of items, each of these have to have a unique key. So for the key, what I also did is I included a user ID for each one. Now, since all of these first names are different, you can even use first names, just anything that's different. But basically this key, in this case, is equal to user.id, boom roasted. So now if this re-renders, check it out. How beautiful is that? So again, what we can do is we can take in any piece of data from the entire application and we can pass it into user list or any component that we want as a property. And then with those properties, 
we can pretty much do whatever we want with them. We can display different bits of data. We can add event handlers, which we're going to be doing soon. And man, that is one beautiful piece of software right there. Mm -mm -mm. Now, another thing I want to point out is remember, any time we make changes to the store, say we add a new user, this component automatically gets updated. We don't have to call a special update now function. We don't have to do anything weird. That's the awesome thing about React and Redux. All we have to do is emit an action, and whenever it changes the store, whether it's a button, a slider, it doesn't matter, it automatically changes the view to reflect your data properly. It is incredibly beautiful. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. And also, I don't know if I mentioned this, if you guys wanna donate to my Patreon account, I'm actually saving up for a grilled cheese sandwich. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. I will see you guys later.